we offer customized, flexible nutritional counseling designed specifically for you. We work with diverse clientele, all different ages, different needs, and goals. Whether you are looking for fat loss, muscle gain, body composition shifts, improved health, performance, and endurance, we're here to help. Anabolic Academy was this four, right? Yeah, four. Yeah, with, four, yeah. Yeah, we're four. four. We're big Danny Broadhurst and Fackery Mubarak, right? I always hope I pronounce your name right. The, <laughs> the legend Fackery Mubarak. Uh, we got a whole bunch of questions today. So, uh, a bunch. How many did you get, John? I only got three, but one of them's corny. Uh, one of them doesn't even matter. But um, all right, so I'll just start rattling off questions. First, first of all, I know you know I saw this girl in the gym today. <laughs> I just I, I had to leave. <laughs> I had to. I was like, all right, I got I got to get out of here. Anyway, discussion for another time. <laughs> all right, uh, the first question. This is actually a pretty good question. That that kid, Joan Ramadani from India. Oh yeah, yeah, good kid. He said that the quick, what do we think the best physique of all time is? Ooh. That, that's a rough one. That's a rough one. That is a that is a rough one. Uh I I are we, are we strictly to physique yeah. lines and bodybuilding or just bodybuilding best bodybuilder ever? I don't know. It you know, it just says best physique of all time. I mean, there's so many. I mean, yeah, you'd as far as bodybuilder, you'd have to go right to Ronnie Coleman, right? But yeah. tech, but technically, is he the best physique ever? He's the most massive. He was the hardest. But I mean, I could see people picking Kevin Lavrone. You know, I could Arnold, see people, people pick Arnold. All oh, the time. People pick Arnold all the time. I mean, you know, I could see people picking Arnold. I could see. But for me, I was always a I was always a fan of the mass monsters. So anytime anybody asks me the greatest bodybuilder of all time, it's Ronnie Coleman. Period. Like that's as far as I'm concerned. You know, yeah, I agree. But but if you like if you like that you know classic look, you know then maybe you would go like uh you know a Gasparri or a Lee Labrada or a, or Frank Zane Frank Zane Frank <laughs> Zane or some shit like that. But you know I don't know. I say then, I say I say Ronnie's the best bodybuilder of all time. Yeah, what else? Bodybuilder yes. physique of all time. I gotta go with Flex Wheeler combination of size. Yes. Yeah. Lines and everything else. Yeah, that's right. Flex was fucking phenomenal. That's right. Yeah. Ronnie Coleman is the only bodybuilder that I could say would be like Mr. Olympia in any era, oh, yeah. including today's. Like you could put him in any way and he would still beat everybody, you know? But Dwayne know. probably would too. You think so? Well, not any era. Who's that yeah, not- Dorian. Not any era. He would I don't I don't know about if he would beat Phil, but he definitely would be up there. Yeah, I don't think he would beat Phil, but 2003 Ronnie Coleman beats any bodybuilder I've ever seen, ever. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you, know who's my be- you know who's my favorite Ronnie? 2001 Arnold Classic. I'd have to go back and look at that one. I gotta go back and look at that one. So he won 99, he won 98, 98, 99, 98. 2000, yeah. and then after 2000, he did the 2001 Arnold Classic. Look at his physique. He was right when he won the Hummer. Yeah, oh. right. When he won the Hummer. His waist was small. He yeah. was just like that. To me, that's the best Ronnie ever. Yeah, Hummer on. Go. That's the license plate. Yeah, yeah. Was it? Was yeah. it really? <laughs> Hummer on. Yeah. Come that's on. cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. So the next question is from my friend Tom, Thomas Andrew, nineteen sixty four on Instagram. <clears throat> uh, basically, he wants to know. We've all seen. We we're actually talking about this yesterday on our on a little uh, Instagram feed. Uh, the 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 work ethic that's lacking in the gym is it pouring over into the pro bodybuilding scene? That's a tough one. No. I, I I honestly really couldn't tell you because I'm not really that deep into the pro bodybuilding scene. I've only seen a handful of pros really train, and. It well, depends on the pro, really. I I'm mean, not a like, pro, so <laughs> yeah. But you've seen pros. You've been around pros that train. Factory obviously has the most experience with that. So, what do you think, Fact? Um, 
I, you know what it is? You have, you have more people competing now. You have more pros competing. So whenever you, whenever you increase the population of anything, you're going to see more people lacking. Mm, good point. Yeah. Improving. You know, you're going to see more people, you know, on both opposite ends of the spectrum, right? So Yeah, good point, good point. It depends who you're looking at. I mean, it, I don't think the guys that are finishing top 10, 15, or whatever, even the guys all in the Olympia, you know, I mean, they're training for the most part pretty hardcore and 100%. I mean, you know, we, we've been critical of a few of them, but, you know, that's still training harder than than, than the average Joe. Yeah, person. right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's their job. Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. Yeah, there's no I mean, question. There's three, like oh. I said, there's three pro open bodybuilders. Well, three pro bodybuilders, two twelve and open in my gym, uh, and uh, there's Sean Clarita, and he's a machine. Uh, I, I've never seen anybody train as hard as he does. Uh, there's two other guys. I won't mention their names, and I could. Just, they just look like they're going through the motions. But at the same time, they already have the size already, so I there's don't all, know. Always been yeah. guys like that, though. That's like, yeah. um, what's his face, Paul Delette? Yeah, Paul Delette. Mm. You know, he always changed very, very light. Yeah. You know. Uh, who else? I don't know. John, let me ask you a question. How good, yeah. how good are those pros that train light? More, most of the time, not very good. <laughs> no, no, the guys in your gym, you said there's two pros in your gym. I don't train that heavy. That tense. How good are they as pros? Uh, they're in the top 20 in the world. Put it that way. <laughs> they're in the top. They're not in the top 10 in the Olympia, but they're in the top 20 in the world because they've, they've broken the, they've, They've broken the top 10 in the Arnold and so on and so forth. But at the same time, you know, if you have all that muscle, do you have to kill yourself anymore? I don't, I don't really know. You still do, right? I mean, yeah. Regan, Regan doesn't even want to train with Milos. He'll train with him oh. like once or twice a week. <laughs> really? And then he'll bail. Yeah. I'm yeah. telling you, man, I will, I will, I will say, and it's not because I know the guy. I, I mean, Sean Clarita just. I've never seen he's he I've never seen anybody train like that. If I did his workout, I'd probably throw up or piss out. I mean, I've looked, I know. And I don't think I train like a pussy. I don't train like a pro, but I don't train like a pussy. And I've seen him to the point where he can't breathe. He can't talk. He can't, you know, he's just exhausted, you know, and it show it obviously shows, you know, it clearly shows, you know, yeah. anyway. All right. And this is a stupid question that I got. How do you know if you have a gym crush? Just a stupid question, but but yeah, Joe, I'll basically just answer it. If you're, yeah, it was just stupid. If you're a girl, your gym crush is gonna approach you. Like if 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 you're if if, if you're a girl and the guy likes you, you're his gym crush. He's gonna approach you, okay? Unless he's a not well, a very girl, the girl comes over, headphones come off. Right. Yes. Good point. That's, yeah. That's yeah. Good yeah. Head, yeah. Usually, girl. Right. Girls they will. They won't. Yeah. They won't be direct, but they'll give you like I'm available energy. Like you said, the headphones come off. They'll work out off. near you. You know, if you look at them, they'll smile. You know, that kind of thing. But with guys, they're gonna uh, unless for some reason they are too embarrassed. And why would you want that guy anyway? You know, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna talk to you. But I think gym crushes are more for girls. I think guys in the gym. You know, if I had a really, if I had a, there's not much, much of a crush. It's more like there's so many hot girls. I got to get one of them. <laughs> I had a friend at one time that told me, um, uh, meeting girls is like going to war. If you drop enough bombs, you don't have to be very accurate. Sooner or later, you'll hit a target. <laughs> mm. Anyway, let's get back to uh, bodybuilding. Um, All right. So I'm going to give this one to, uh, well, both of you guys could have it, but uh, Danny. Uh, why do bodybuilders prefer primo to EQ and what are the benefits for each on off season? I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't know why they're comparing primo to EQ. I don't, I don't know either. And I, I don't, I don't know. I've never heard someone say, Oh, well, I'm not going to take EQ. I'll take primo instead. Me um, neither. So I don't, I don't know, but, but I mean, EQ in my opinion isn't really the best steroid and risk reward wise i think it's probably one of the worst um huge rise in red blood cell count in hematocrit um it's more of an endurance athlete's drug i mean it, it's made for racehorses so um it's it's you know for endurance it, it helps you know it, it would be a better drug for fighters or for um you know, endurance athletes as opposed to um, bodybuilders. Body but I mean, obviously bodybuilders use it. Um, it can help, you know, with training in the gym and it can help 
supposedly with appetite. Um, I think we talked about this before, but I, I've never noticed um, a really big increase in appetite from it, honestly. Um, and uh, it's the only thing that raises my hematocrit uh, out of range. Really? I what do you think? Sorry, all the guys. tests in the world and, and it, it won't go out of range. But it's the second I take EQ, it's it's going to 54, 55. Um, so I, I feel oh. like reward, I don't think it's you know benefit that beneficial i think primo i would prefer primo on it if it were one or the other what do you think factory so <clears throat> so my my favorite off-season stack is test eq and all the I, I i absolutely love eq a lot of guys tell me that a lot of guys it. i hear that I, a lot i do agree with danny with, with you know with the hematogrit uh increase yeah. and, and having you know having to I guess, you know, what they call, you know, drawing blood or, you know, a little bit more of pulling out blood or blood dumping. Donate, blood. Yeah, donating blood, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that that helps bring down the level, but EQ for me, you know, it's my, it's my absolutely favorite off-season drug. It, 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 a, lot of, a lot of strength, a lot of size, a lot of endurance. Um, helps with the appetite. Oh, it's not a, you know, it's not an, incre an incredible increase like a magistral acetate is, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, I absolutely love the drug, but what the question you got, uh, I mean, I, I'm sure Danny, I'm sure Danny has, has, has also witnessed this, witnessed this over like the last couple of years. Um, a lot of coaches now, what they're doing is, um, if, if, you know, and Danny could chime in at, at any time is they're now, you know, using these pre-contest drugs like a Prima Bolin, like a Masterone, like a, you know, like softer drugs at higher dosages. So they'll keep the test lower, but they'll do like 700 milligrams right. of Primo. You know, six to seven hundred milligrams of masterone. Um, so their whole thing is, well, you know, you, we're going to keep you guys safer because we're keeping the tests lower, but then everything else is high. <laughs> no, bro. Anything no, else specifically else, Primo. Yeah. So I, I mean, I know a lot of people that run Primo as a base. Jordan, really? Jordan, Jordan Peters is notorious for that. He talks about it. He'll run. He doesn't like running more than four hundred milligrams of test, and he'll run Primo as a base. Wow. I mean, it's not the first time I've heard it, but any person I've talked to that is credible, like like you two guys, they say testosterone has to be the base. It's king. Yeah. That's not, yeah. Not only natural, but John, you have to remember to like, so 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 for everybody out there hearing, listening to, to, the, to, the, to the podcast, Prima Bold and like almost every other anabolic steroid increases in, increases nitrogen protein retention, right? It increases the, the, the synthesis of the protein. And, and into the body to create more muscle. So the higher the anabolic steroid is, and, and Primo being at a high anabolic rate compared to, to an, 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 a high and and a cream. right? It increases the protein synthesis. So your kidneys are working even more than you would if you had 750 milligrams of test and like let's say 300, 400 milligrams of Primo. So it's actually more dangerous. Now you're gonna get a hundred thousand people, you know, that are gonna disagree with me, but science is science. Yeah, I mean, no, the majority of people that I've I've listened to over the years, like a Dave or a Cito or um, Factory or Arns or whatever the case may be, they are all it's their all opinion is the same when it comes to testosterone. Testosterone is, is your base. As far as the uh, EQ and Primo, I was never. I've had plenty of friends that loved EQ. I never was a big fan of EQ. I was always a, I always liked Deca over EQ, especially in the off season. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, you know that was always my go to like my off season I was always uh test deca and some kind of d ball usually d ball not not so much anadrol I always got better results from from d ball as far as size but then again it. no no I can't I, it, it it um makes my back lock up really yeah oh yeah yeah I can't train legs on d ball wow really how does that work the lower back pumps you lower back gets pumped and then really yeah, I'm like on the floor, like messed up from it. Wow. Yeah, no, I never, I never. Well, then again, you guys are in a different category than I am. You got like a hundred pounds difference. So, but, all right. So the next one, the next question is a uh, natural bodybuilder. There's two natural supplements. Uh, Dan, you might have to help me out with the. Uh, with oh, the Tonga, Ali, and then uh, Ashwagandha. Yeah. I, yeah. How do those two actually help for natural test levels? I mean, not, nothing is really going to help with, yeah. with natural test levels. Yeah. I mean, um, and, you know, the stuff that, that 
they you know like the deer antler all that stuff that stuff will make you horny uh but that's you know it makes people think it's increasing their testosterone just because it's increasing their sex drive but the two are not necessarily correlated i wanted yeah. to go back though and say one thing about the hematocrit and the red blood cell count okay i just forgot um yeah so when i've seen you know my training partner his his hematocrit's like always like 56 you know and he's an older guy and and so I did some research on on um, uh, raised hematocrit in um, men who who do testosterone replacement therapy, and and there's there is no correlation of cardiac events um, of the men who have high hematocrit and the men who don't. Um, so I don't know if it just raises it on the on the blood test, and and it and it doesn't really necessarily it doesn't look like it has an impact on, on cardiac event, um, you know, stroke or, or heart attack um, through the studies of, but that's not EQ, but that's, that's testosterone replacement. Right. But, but still, um, I, I always thought that was kind of interesting. That is, that is interesting. Cause that's, that's, if you went to a doctor and they didn't know why it was very high, they would, they would basically freak out right they like, would freak out yeah yeah, yeah they, you know my body yeah. my doctor thank god is is you know not a pro bodybuilder but is a is a bodybuilder you know he he knows the ins and outs which is why i go to him you know when i when i get checked and whatnot but um yeah as far as the natural stuff factory let me ask you this if somebody is natural you like i've always like when you throw like fats cholesterol into your diet that always increases your testosterone level. And the mere fact that you're working out helps increase your testosterone. Am I accurate? So if you're natural, I would probably more likely rearrange my diet and my training to increase my test levels rather than take some over-the-counter leaf. <laughs> you know, I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're speaking about healthy fats, you know, yeah, yeah healthy fats, avocados, omegas, you know, healthy fats like, you know, from nuts and nut butters and stuff like that yeah right yeah any uh, natural testosterone but you have to remember guys this is a supplement so in the supplement industry you have to sell a test booster right <laughs> right 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 good point, you have good to point. Have a test booster, so you know let's, yeah let's, let's do uh let's pick some supplements that you know they did a study on that on a rat that weighs you know a couple of ounces and then increases testosterone and put it into a the human body instead of the supplement so that's 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 what that is but danny's right that doesn't you you could take a bottle of that per day, uh, literally. A, don't do this, guys. I'm just telling you. You could take a bottle per day of any testosterone booster and go get your blood work checked, and it ain't gonna go any higher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it's I agree, man. It's... No, yeah, <laughs> and and uh, yeah, I mean the ashwagandha I think is more useful, supposedly for like a re relaxation and anxiety um, uh, prevention. Um, there there's a couple patented forms. There's KSM six six. And then there's sensoril. Um, and uh, I don't know quite what the difference is, but um, I know John Meadows had sensoril in uh, a couple of his products. Um, his pre-workout, I think, actually had it in it. Really? Uh, so it, there are studies where it helps um, increase performance and reduce anxiety. But um, as far as I never even heard anyone say that it increased testosterone. That's yeah. Right. But um, yeah, I mean, Fox... Fox on point with that. I think you're not gonna. You could take a bottle of that stuff, and you're not gonna. Yeah, I yeah. don't think. Uh, I don't think it matters much. You know, listen. If you're of age and you can get it legally, and you can get your blood work done from a doctor, just you know, if your test levels are low, you know, just just get it legally. You know, and get and believe me, it's night and day. Anyway, a lot, a lot of guys think that you know only because you're getting older, you're taking a steroid or PED, but. Actually, by doing hormone replacement, TRT, HRT, you know, whichever, whichever, depending on, on your levels, you're just putting back what you're losing, right? So it's not like you're taking like a, you are taking a steroid because it is a steroid, right. but you're just adding a testosterone, you're adding testosterone back to your body that you're losing. So you're not, it's, it's not like it's, you know, the side effects are happening when, when your test levels get too high, right, you right. Know, when you get above ranges. So if you're taking, you know, if you have, if your test level is 50. 75, zero, and you're taking, you know, a shot every week, every 10 days, every two weeks, depending on what the doctor says, 
you're not doing yourself any harm. That's, that's that. You're actually helping yourself. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. that's right. That's and right. and I, and I would say I would say as long as you're avoiding, as long as you get the dosage just right, um, to where you don't need an AI. Right. 100%. AI? What do you mean? What's uh, that? Aromat aromatase inhibitor. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. like aromatase, or because that—that's really what's going to kill your lipids, your your good cholesterol, your HDL. Yeah. Um, so, mm. and, and all the good doctors that are really into the health aspect, um, they they try to get it to where your 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 est est estrogen levels are um, not high, and it's oh. not hurting too much. So, so you won't need an AI. Um, in interesting oh. very interesting <laughs> all right next question this is a good question because i've wondered about this myself i have my own thing that i use but people ask me all the time pct uh, protocol after a 16 week cycle i'm assuming like a, a hard cycle like you know test as your base an anabolic an oral you know well, maybe it would be the same what happened it I mean, would all be the same like it would change what would you do? You need a PCT if you're just doing like, let's say, oral Winnie and oral Anivar, you know? Mm, I mean, probably. I mean, it would be probably wise. Okay. But, anyway. Um, all right. So what do you what do you, what do you, do you think, Fact? What is your protocol for your PCT after a 16-week cycle? So this depends on age. <clears throat> so if somebody, if somebody is a, you know, let's say you start as a teenager and and you're 18, 19, let's, let's say you start. Yeah, somebody who's young between like, I don't know, I'm going to, I'm going to give an adult age to take steroids. Some kids are taking it at 13, 14. Yeah. Right. right. 20 to 25 years old. Right. You know, and you're running, you know, you're running a small cycle. You mentioned some orals um, previously and you're adding tests to it, you know, get your blood work checked. If your blood work is showing that, you know, you need to come off, come off. So a PCT for somebody who, who's that young would be, you know, ACG, Clomade, and, and Novadex, you know, they don't need to take a test replacement. Um, but right, if somebody who's older, you know, and this, and I've had a lot of people argue, oh, why this, this is a PCT not to put put testosterone in there and this and that, this and this. It depends on age. So, like I said, somebody younger doesn't doesn't most likely need a test in there in the PCT. But somebody who's older, who comes off and whose test levels are shit or zero, fifty, or hundred, whatever, yeah, they they need tests in there. They need a shot of tests every ten to fourteen days, just like they would. If they never took a steroid and they went right. to a doctor, if you go to an HRT doctor, he's going to put you on an ACG test and, you know, and, and, and either Novadex, Clomade, depending on everything else, but it all depends on age. Test in, test out depends on age. I agree a hundred percent with the age thing, because I remember my first real, my first real cycle and, um, going back on, I mean, I remember like a couple of days after taking Clomade, it was like, boom. <laughs> you know it was just you know but uh, uh but now yeah you're right i have to take hcg clomid mm -hmm. and you know, stay on a little bit of test because i'm an old that motherfucker. To your girlfriend and she'll uh be more likely to have twins <laughs> all right you gotta you explain that? that now you know that well i mean i don't, I don't know the science behind it but uh, I, HCG? I that, uh, no clomid really yeah mm -hmm. so clomid so if you if so all the bodybuilders out here out there that are listening if you're trying to have a baby you know, the protocol to have, in order, the protocol to increase your, your, your sperm, which is the problem usually with bodybuilders don't have kids, is a, is a sperm F count, is to take HMG, HMG, HMG. HMG. Right, which is, a, it used to be called Repronex. But not Human even menopausal gonadotropin. Right, well, that's what it's for. Yeah, that's what it's yeah. for. It's, it's for females, actually. So the, what they give females to, to, to develop uh, and produce eggs, it's pretty much the same with the what guys, guys should take to develop more sperm count, which is HMG. Um, I would say 75 uh, IUs per day. Um, ACG, I would say 250 IUs per day. Uh, Clomade, you know, and, and we had talked about this before and, and a little bit of provirin just, just increase the test levels. Um, usually after 21 days, you know, your test, your, test, your test could go from like zero to like 10 million, you know, literally, like literally, like literal numbers, like zero to like 10 million. Really? So, yeah, yeah, no, no serious numbers, and um, I've seen it, and uh, same thing with females. So if you, so for example, if you go to um the uh, uh, IVF clinic, that's what they're gonna prescribe to females, but they don't, they won't prescribe it to guys. No, they won't give the, they won't give them Clomid though. Right, right, right. So right. Yeah, so yeah, even, yeah, the HMG, yeah. Yeah, so they won't even give it to guys, but the guys protocol is the same thing, and if the guys don't have sperm, it doesn't matter how much 
legs, eggs of females is, is producing, you know? Yeah, right, right. Wow. But definitely do not rely on, on the um, testosterone or the anabolics as a birth control. No. Oh. Because it is, it, it a lot of it has actually been studied for that, and it does not work. <laughs> and, right. and, and yeah, I've I've actually had um, uh, experience with that, and in, in my F, F, FSH and LH were zero, um, which is what indicates your sperm count. Um, and um, I've still actually managed to um, get someone pregnant or get Angela pregnant um she miscarried unfortunately but oh wow um yeah so um it, it's definitely not a foolproof <laughs> way right. so make sure uh you use protection or yeah just, just pull out on. will you <laughs> yeah or the girls on uh, birth control you because need, you need one sperm that's all you need just one sperm right? just one, <laughs> one, you know? one super swimmer yeah. and i believe that it stays alive in there for a couple of days jesus christ yeah my shits might it might always be dead. I don't know. Anyway, so all right. So there's another PCT uh, question. Uh, PCT after a 12 week off season cycle, should you use PCT if you have a contest in 20 weeks? Why? I, I mean, my my attitude would be why not? I mean, well, I don't think you're gonna much time. Okay. So I, I personally, I probably would not. But okay. You know, okay. If you if you plan that's if you plan you clearly have planned poorly. Ah, good point. Situation. Good point. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So let's say that is the situation factory. What would you do? <clears throat> I'm a big blood work guy, man. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm a big blood work guy. If, if you're, you know, again, uh, we 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 talked about somebody before we got on the air. <clears throat> We're not going to mention no names, but you know, if 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 your blood work shows that you need to come off and your creatine is high, your creatinine is high, your bun is high, your GFR is lower, your CK levels are high, your 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 your, your liver enzymes are fucking high. Come on guys. Like yeah, right, right, right. I don't I don't even care if it's a pro trying to win the Miss Olympia. It's like something that, that you got to stay healthy and by coming off you need to bring the numbers. But you know on, on the question you're asking, have I run have I run clients you know, 24 weeks on? Yeah, I have because, you know, we'll, we'll get a blood work and at the end of the 12 week cycle, 16 week cycle, we'll get blood work done and, and everything shows clear. Everything's clear. So we'll run right. like another couple more weeks, but it depends on blood work. I would that, add in HCG for a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a great idea. Fox, yeah. that, that, that's, that's, that's the best way to do that. Like Fock was saying, um, add an HCG uh, for a post cycle, like with the test. Um, you could add that into your cycle. Um, if you've been on on for a little while, like you've had an off season cycle, and then you're transitioning, um, you could do that for like maybe four weeks in between um, at like 500 or a thousand uh, every I U every few uh, at like three times a week. Ah, okay. So, let me ask you a question. How, how do you how do you run how do you personally run an ACG? Um, on a regular PCC, I, I do. I don't take HCG because I had testicular cancer. Right. Um, but um, like on clients, um, for post cycle or let's say post cycle, yeah, uh, twenty five hundred. Uh, well, starts with um, say like, units, right? Because I don't know, we don't know. Yeah, twenty five hundred. Um, how many per day? Twenty five hundred three times a week. Are you blast like, for about a, for about for about a month. And then um, uh, stop that. See, I always use like basically 30 units a day for about a month or so. 30 yeah. units on an insulin needle or 30 units of ACG? ACG and an insulin needle. How, well, it depends many, what the bottle units, is. Yeah, how many units is that coming out per? per oh, per, I see what you're saying. Um, uh, that's a 10,000 10, IU 3, bottle. So it's, one, two, three, three thousand. Okay. Yeah. 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 All right. You guys, at least I'm doing something right. Jesus. <laughs> you could start with like 5,000 weeks, one and two, and then uh, go down to 2,500, three and four. And then uh, Clomid, I'll take 150 uh, week one, 100 week two, and then 50 week three um, per day uh, for post cycle. And then uh, Novadex or Raloxifene. 
Novadex, I'll do 25, 30 milligrams a day for the entire month. And then that should, that should be, be sufficient right, for a post right. It only takes about a month. What, what would you say, Fuck? How long do you? Yeah, I, I go 40 days. My, my PCT is 40, 40 days. days. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't matter how big you are. Like if you're, you know, for, for a bodybuilder, no, same. Doesn't matter if you're 300 pounds or 150 pounds. Doesn't matter. Well, by the time you, by the time you've gotten to 300 pounds, you probably have been good on so long <laughs> that you need uh, you need replacement. So yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. All right, it's a, the, the next question is kind of strange. Uh, you know, I don't know what the, what it means, but uh, natural versus PEDs. Does do does that mean like how you would train or how you would eat or as far as being natural versus PEDs or? Like do you train or eat a, a different way if you were natural, or rather, or using PEDs? I, I don't, I don't understand the the question a little bit. It's like the same. I, I mean, if, if when you start training, you start growing because you're stimulating your muscles with heavy weight. Yeah. You start growing because you're eating more. So what makes anybody think it's different when you start taking PEDs, right? I mean, the yeah. PED you know, give, tell somebody, well, you, you don't need to train hard, harder. You don't need to eat more. Yeah. You know, uh, the guy that train heavier and eat more are the ones that keep growing. Right. Yeah. I think on the, I think on the lower level, like the, the, you know, the guy the the, the gym heads, the, you know, the, the bro, bro science. Right. I think they think, well, if you take PEDs, well, you don't have to really eat that much and you don't have to train that hard and, you know, which is obviously ridiculous. And uh, I, I obviously not even close to to um, to you guys, but I remember this one guy was taking like, I don't know, three or four different compounds. And he said, what else could I take? And I, I actually told him, I was like, you're, ask, you're asking the wrong question. You should ask how how much harder should I train or how yeah. how much more should I eat rather yeah. as opposed to what else could I could I take? Because you're taking too much shit as it is because you're not even competing. And this guy had like, you know, it's amazing how genetics play a role, even when when you're when you, when it comes to anabolics, because you can have a guy be on anabolics and it doesn't look like anything. That's true. You know, and then you can have a guy like take two things and he just blows up. You know, it just he looks at the weights, takes two like Kevin Lavron, right? He was like he looked like a normal guy in the off season, and then by the time he got to the Olympia, he was a fucking freak. You know. Yeah, I mean, and, I think a, a lot of a lot of what contributes to to becoming a professional is 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 not only how well you respond, but how well your body can handle the the your blood work. You know uh, how 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 well your body can handle that kind of abuse. You know, um, mm-hmm. uh, you know that's a big part of it because some people, you know, this the second they start taking something, you know, their 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 hematocrit goes super high. They're creatinine's crazy you know their li- kidneys you know have issues yes yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. you know like i know f- for myself um milos has seen my blood work and been like what this is superhuman insane yeah um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah my hematocrit will not go above 50 unless i take eq and you know on 1200 tests 750 to 1200 tests full cycle my hematocrit will not not go above uh 50 51 um which is standard range yeah. so just definitely a lot of it that that's another part of it not not only how you respond to the to the drugs physically but also how well your your organs and and everything can handle the mm. the, the drugs okay. you know when i when i would go for blood work and you know i was on and off i would go both uh both times i usually go a couple times a year I, I wouldn't, I, it was never anything out of range. You know, my kidney, uh, my creatinine level would be like maybe 1.4, 1.5. And if I was taking orals, my liver enzymes would go up. But if if I wasn't, they would stay normal. And uh, nothing really was ever out of, not that I've ever taken tremendous amounts of stuff, but nothing was ever truly out of whack. And even with the creatinine level, my, my doctor would tell me, just because you have a little bit of more muscle on than the average person, your kidney, your kidney function is going to be higher. So he never really, he never really, you know, never really concerned him that much, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that's why Fuck was talking about GFR. Right? That's yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Danny. You explain what you no, 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 you go. No, please. You're more tactical. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> You're more technical. <laughs> no, no, no. If one of no, you guys no. owns, if, you, if one of you, okay. yeah, GFR is basically your, your filtration rate, right? I mean, it's it's just how much your kidneys are filtrating. So, you know, John, you, you pretty much hit it on the nose that somebody who who has more muscle might have higher creatine levels. I mean, my creatine levels in 2002 were already like 1.6, 1.7. I just started taking, you know, PEDs in 2000, and I kept the same creatine levels for a long time. But my bun was, you know. 1920, so that was low. You know, my GFR was still in the 90s, you know, but my creatine levels were higher. But GFR is the indication of, of kidney disease, GFR and CK levels. So if your, GF, your, if your GFR, your filtration rate starts dropping, you know, it's like somebody like somebody my age, you know, in, in, in my late 40s, I, I should be like in the 70s, you know? So if you're in your late 40s, the GFR is in your 30s or in, your, in, in the 20s, and you're in trouble. You're, you're just, and, and then naturally, your GFR goes down by itself every single wow. year. Okay. You know, so imagine, you know, increasing the amount of uh, filtration, which, which, which me and Danny have spoken about with, like, even, even drugs that we think, that, that everybody thinks are non-toxic, like Anabar, Primobolin, you know, they, they still increase your, your, your filtration rate of, your, of, the, of the kidneys. So it's, mm. it's, it's a lot more than just, just this, well, it's toxicity or not toxicity. That's not it. It's filtration and, and the way your body synthesizes the protein and everything else. I mean, there's a science to it. Yeah. Okay. People, people don't get it right. Even I don't care how. See, I don't talk tech, technical, right? Like I'm not. I'm not here talking about you know these high these high you know ten syllable words and everything else. You know, but you have to understand what what each drug does, and, and most people don't, right? They could explain. They could explain it and, and wow people with their language and and you know this yes. whole education. Yes. But yeah. at the end of the day, you're doing some stupid shit that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah, I've noticed that a lot, like, especially in the bodybuilding world, people you throw around new phrases and bigger words and, 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 and I'm just like, where the fuck did this, where the fuck did it come from? Yeah, where the fuck did that come from? Like, uh, what was one of the questions that we, oh, the re refeed, when you go on a, a refeed, I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> All right, last question. Uh, do you need to eat more when you get bigger? <laughs> I, I would think so. How much you eat, Danny? <laughs> <laughs> no, right now I'm. I mean, you know how it is. Uh, you know, you maintain muscle pretty easily. Um, like I haven't. Yeah, I've basically been in bed for the past three months, and and I'm still around two fifty, two sixty. Um, and and I won't go below that. And I'm only eating like you know twice a day. Wow. Um. So. Um. But yeah, I mean, definitely that's once you've built that uh muscle that stays you know the permanent muscle like mm -hmm. you have it fuck you know um and and you know that takes years you know to build um but once that's there it's really hard to lose right. i think we were talking about that the other week right oh, um, maybe i don't remember yeah or me and fuck were maybe um just you know once that muscle's there it's 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 hard to lose, you know, and you see that with a lot of pros who try to downsize. And, it takes and time. It takes a lot of time. They can't downsize. Yeah, you know. I mean, but fact you know, as far as the calories, right, Factory? When you went in your prime, you used to eat about eight thousand, eight thousand a day, right? Six to eight thousand, but my basal metabolic rate was, you know, in the 25, 2600s, You know, every every time I took it, and that's 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 without training for a couple of days, without playing sports for a couple of days, I would just go and get tested. So. My basal, my basal is your rest of the metabolic rate. You know that that would that, that was high. For every for every pound of we, I said this before, but for every pound of muscle that you have, you burn sixty nine calories a day, and for every pound of fat, you only burn nine. Okay. And that's your, that's your basal metabolic rate. And and like Fuck was saying, that that's your basal metabolic rate is the amount of calories that you would burn if you're just to lay in bed all day. Like you, wow. you would do nothing, absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, you know, a, a guy that's big, you don't like fuck was saying in his prime, I mean, his basal metabolic rate was probably, you know, 3000 or something, you know, and that's like, literally, if he were to not move, he would be in a coma, he right, right, right. burning 3000 calories a day. <laughs> yeah. right? So imagine how much someone like that has to eat. Right. To, good point. Good point. You know, to gain weight. I mean, it's, it's crazy, you know, and, um. What's, what's helped me a lot is, is, is I use, uh, I, I add a lot of protein shakes uh, of Pepto pro the hydrolyzed, uh, casein, uh, ah, because, okay. you know, if you're to, if you're to add like a whey isolate shake, um, to every, every meal, that's going to really upset your stomach. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
this for some reason the hydrolyzed casein um does not so you know i'll I'll eat six seven hundred grams of protein a day okay. um in in the off season and um and and just because you know i'll add that on top of my my meat meals um mm-hmm. so yeah i mean you got to get food in however you can and and the obviously the bigger you get like the person said uh you know the more you got to eat <laughs> so okay. another another thing too on the on that question is <clears throat> we we hear bodybuilders that don't eat enough food so when they get on stage that muscle is not dense hard muscle right they could be as big as they are in the off season but when they get on stage they get mushy they start sweating more you know because that muscle is anabolic muscle right i mean mm. it's not dense matured settled muscle like like a hottie chopin has yeah you know? right so a lot of times like guys could be as big as they want in the off season and they could be in good condition right they could be in really good condition in the off season because they're drinking a lot of water you know they're eating they're eating their foods they're, they're drinking their foods they're, they're taking in the calories some way somehow mm. you know they're taking you know androgenic high androgenic peds so they're weighing whatever they're weighing but the minute they start cutting water you know the minute they do a diuretic the minute they you know they start cutting calories They'll they'll start comes right know, off, yeah. Yeah, and you can see it. You can see the mushy muscle. You can see the, you know you can see how soft they get on stage. Uh, Factory, I'm just gonna bother you for one thing, and then we can get going. When you were eating eight thousand calories a day, I don't think a lot of people know what kind of food consumption eight thousand calories is. Can you quickly run down like a day worth of food that you remember when you were in your prime? Yeah, so I would. So so my my breakfast would be let's say ten whole eggs. You know, which if you <laughs> ten whole eggs is a big fucking fucking thing. lot. Yeah, so it would either be ten whole, whole eggs, or if I didn't feel like eating eggs, I would have ten ounces of red meat. That would be my that would be my protein. Um, I would do a half a cup of cream of rice. So a quarter cup is like thirty something grams. A half a cup is like you know double whatever eighty some a little bit less than eighty grams. I would have two slices of Ezekiel bread, and I would have peanut butter on the bread, and that would be breakfast. And then I would eat like I, I would literally eat every two and a half hours. Like it was on it was. It was on the clock there was no three hours it was two and a half hours on the clock and so an hour later would be you know 10 ounces of, of meat like danny said six seven seven hundred calories six seven hundred you know pro, grams of protein per day um 10 ounces of meat you know chicken 10 ounces of protein cup and a half of, of rice you know another three quarter cups of, of of some type of lentil or beans you know avocado let's say six ounces of avocado and i would do i would do a tablespoon of olive oil, of olive oil. And then two and a half hours later, you know, it would just repeat that way. But I'll tell you, you know, I'll tell you one thing. When I was in the off season, you know, even if you add that much food, it's hard to get, you know, six, seven, eight thousand calories per day. So I would have a cheat meal every single day. I mean, I would because my my, my calories would burn so quickly. You know, and me being on GH, you know, for eighteen straight years, like I said in the last show, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I would burn a lot of calories. But you know, I I eat a lot. I eat a lot. Yeah, yeah, and even my even my pre contest, like. I don't think I ever went under like 2,500 calories for like pre contest ever. Wow. And I was like the lowest. I was like my low carb days. Right. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people don't realize how much food that these guys, you know, uh, that these guys have to eat or guys like you have to eat. It's, it's, it's a, it's a job. It's torture. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. Torture. Bad. I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I, I can think back at times where, where, you know, putting cream of rice and chicken in the blender, you know, and, and, and <laughs> blending, you know, I know uh, I've heard of crazy things like that too. Every, every day, in the off season, when it gets to the peak off season, I, I think to myself, why am I doing this to myself? I feel so sick. I feel yeah. so sick. And then I wake up the next day, do it again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I, I love eating. So I, I, could, I could eat all day. But I remember when I first started, it was like my, my, so, you know, we didn't know a lot about nutrition. Well, none, none of us do when we first started, right? Because we didn't have the yeah. internet back then. Yeah. Well, yeah. I remember eating like you know a whole bunch of food and having some fucking mega mass five thousand. Yeah. Shit. Oh yeah. 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 I, I had a, I had like a bucket right next to me in case I had to throw up. And if I threw up, then I had to have <laughs> food. You know, it sounds crazy and, and insane, but that's 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 what it took. Oh. It took. Yeah. I've all yeah. If you haven't thrown up, you definitely aren't. <laughs> yeah, you're not eating enough. Yeah, yeah I've, I've thrown up. Yeah, countless <laughs> yeah. times. Yeah. All these new guys podcasters are gonna be like, "Don't listen to these guys." But yeah, I don't know. Like, Danny's two ninety. I was two eighty. Yeah, know? right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Don't listen to me. I never. I, I got to the point where I went, "Fuck this." <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, gentlemen, I really appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you very much. We'll be back next week, and I will see you guys Wednesday. I don't know. I'll figure out a topic and uh, throw it by you guys, see if it's good. And uh, that's it. All right, fellas. Later. Later, guys.